Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are notes on thermoregulation. I know we've already talked a little bit about thermoregulation and how that happens using, um, using negative feedback loops uh, when we covered homeostasis, but I wanna address specifically how the skin is involved in regulation of body temperature. And we're not gonna go into um, a lot of the information on the hypothalamus because you already have that in your notes handouts. Um, but I do wanna talk about it a little bit and, and how that works uh, at the skin level. So the skin is really important in the regulation of body temperature. The slightest shifts in temperature can disrupt um, homeostasis and change metabolic reactions in the body. And that set point is monitored by your hypothalamus, which we talked about in unit one. Um, so deep body temperature, so like kind of in the core of your body, stays as close to 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 Fahrenheit as possible. But your skin at, at the edges at your periphery, you could be warmer or you could be cooler. Um, and that's because skin plays a role in that homeostatic mechanism to regulate body temperature. So that's what we're going to talk about in these notes. So let's talk about heat production and loss in general. Um, and then specifically how that happens in the body. So heat is a product of cellular metabolism. If you touch your face, your face is warm because you maintain a constant internal body temperature that is warm to the touch. And the way that you do that is through cellular metabolism. You guys know that you breathe oxygen and you consume glucose and that your mitochondria do cellular respiration with that. And that's going to go ahead and convert that sugar into ATP, which is energy. But not all of the energy is converted into usable ATP. Some of it is lost in the form of heat, and that's just the laws of thermodynamics. But the way that our bodies work is it uses that heat to go ahead and to maintain normal body temperature. Okay, and so the most active body cells, the ones where the most cellular respiration is happening, are where most heat is produced. So that's gonna be in your muscle cells, your skeletal muscle, your cardiac muscle, and then the cells of the liver. So those are gonna contribute the most to maintaining your core body temperature. Um, now, when your body is too warm, you're gonna respond with vasodilation, and I'm gonna show you a picture of that, but vaso means vein and dilation means basically to enlarge. So vasodilation means your, your, your veins are basically gonna open up and get bigger. And so that's gonna happen in your dermal and your skin blood vessels. Uh, and then vasoconstriction, which is the opposite. So when they constrict and they get smaller of your deeper blood vessels. And so what that does is it allows you when you're warm to dilate the blood vessels at your skin. And that's gonna go ahead and allow more blood flow to pass closer to your skin. When you're cold and you need to bring that heat into your core, those blood vessels constrict, right? And then it goes ahead and it pulls all of that blood back in towards your core. Um, but he, because heat escapes through your skin and the more surface area of skin you have, the more heat loss you can have. So there's two ways that heat is lost in the body. One is through conduction. So um, heat moves from skin to cooler objects. So like if you touch like a cold metal bench in the winter, the heat is gonna move from your body to the cooler object. Um, and then that is also true when you have blood that is warm flowing down towards your finger, where you've got blood that's already been at the fingertip at your extremity, so it's cooler, you're gonna transfer heat from one blood vessel to another because it's just if you've got a, an artery and a vein passing by each other and the the blood is in one is warm and the blood in the other is slightly cooler they're going to kind of reach an equilibrium um, and then the other the big one that you know is evaporation and that's just that when you sweat the sweat is actually going to evaporate and changes into a gas and that breaks down some of um, the bonds the hydrogen bonds that hold water molecules together and that carries heat away it releases heat so let's talk about um, exactly what's happening in the body. So when your body temperature falls, when you get cold, your thermoreceptors signal the hypothalamus, and that leads to constriction of your dermal blood vessels, and then your sweat glands become inactive, um, and then your muscles start to contract involuntarily, and you start shivering. And what that does is it uses up the energy stores of your muscle cells quickly. And so they have to go ahead and they have to do more cellular respiration, convert more, more glucose into ATP. So they have more energy stored as ATP. So that's actually gonna produce heat as a byproduct. And so that's how your body 
um, increases your body temperature when you're cold. When you're too hot, like in Texas in August or September, your thermoreceptors are going to send a signal to your hypothalamus and your blood vessels are going to dilate. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and activate your sweat glands. So this is kind of just showing what I was talking about with, um, with the current. So you can see as the cool, um, as, as the blood goes ahead and passes by, you can, you can have heat actually transfer as it circulates. Um, so you're going to have the, the, surf, the, the heat is going to go ahead and escape at the, the epidermis. Um, but you also get that, 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 con, that, um, the conduction between the blood also as it circulates. So problems in temper, temperature regulation though. So if you did the gizmo, you know these already. So if you have hypothermia, that's just abnormally low body temperature and it can result from prolonged exposure to cold or actually illness. Um, and so you get shivering of, um, which is an involuntary contraction of your skeletal, skeletal muscle. And that is caused by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus does trigger that. Now, if you don't treat that hypothermia, um, immediately pretty much it's going to pro progress to confusion and then fatigue and then loss of reflexes and loss of consciousness eventually and then potentially death so without treatment of hypothermia the organs will start to shut down hyperthermia is the opposite of that hyper is above and in the gizmo it describes this as heat stroke so you're going to get an abnormally high body temperature and that can occur on a hot humid day um, so when it's really humid out there's so much moisture in the air that uh, evaporation slows down. So sweat can't evaporate correctly. And so when the air temperature is really high, uh, that radiation is less effective and the body can gain heat from that hotter air also. So um, what happens when you have hyperthermia is your skin becomes dry and you start to feel weak and you get a little dizzy and nauseated. Uh, you'll start to develop a headache. Your, your pulse will get rapid and then a little thready, like it starts to become inconsistent and that's very dangerous. Um, so that can also lead to, to very severe consequences and even death. Now, I don't want you to think that a fever is the same as hyperthermia because the fever is that you have that set point in your body, right? Um, so, but a fever is your body's immune response. It says immune system, but that's not a real system. So it's your body's immune response is going ahead and elevating the set point of the hypothalamus to go ahead and raise your body temperature um, on purpose. And it's doing that to fight infection because just like you have a body temperature that your body wants to be at, uh, pathogens also have like a, a normal body temperature for them. And unsurprisingly, bacteria that affect our bodies replicate the fastest at normal human body temperature. So if you have a fever, that's going to slow down the replication of those bacteria because that's not an optimal, optimal environment. So an elevated body temperature from a fever actually helps destroy some, not all, pathogens. So that's it for your notes on thermoregulation. I know that I went pretty fast on that. Um, I want you to understand what's happening with the shivering and with uh, with the sweating, but like the specific details of like the diagrams, I, you don't need to know that. It's just important that you understand how that homeostatic mechanism relates back to your skin and to that feedback loop. If you have any questions, go ahead and make an appointment for tutoring.